Okay, good morning. Um, I am so excited to be here. And just in case you're wondering about this cute photo, it looks so peaceful and quiet. Well, um, minutes before it was complete chaos. And in fact, we took 50 pictures without realizing one of the grandchildren were missing. So... <laughs> <laughs> it was a complete bribe, candy, ice cream, whatever it takes to get that done. You, you know how that goes, right? I mean, look at this morning. This is so exciting to see all of you. You know, when you get a room full of women, you feel energized, right? It's, it's better than a cup of coffee, right? And I just... Um, I love being here, I love the energy in the room, and I look forward to meeting and serving here this morning. But I'm just, I'm just wondering if you need a little pick-me-up. I mean, summer sometimes we get a little lethargic, and maybe our, in our faith we get a, a little bit lazy, and so you have come to the right place. This is going to give you a faith pick-me-up. Now, I want to start this morning by um, just looking at this photo. Does anybody remember? Lost, the story, lost, the TV series, lost. And it was such a well-crafted story of um, these people on the island who had survived this crash, and they were living on the island. It had all our favorite characters, right? John Locke, Jack Shepard, and Hurley. <laughs> and the thing was about this story that I found so amazing was that you couldn't really understand the story until you heard the backstory. You had to wait for that episode where you heard the backstory of each character because nothing would make sense until you heard that backstory. You would begin to understand insights into their character, motivations into the character. And you know, some of us, many of us, kind of read the Bible like this. We read it without getting the backstory. We jump into parts of it, jump into a book, try and understand it, and it doesn't make sense. Or we take a sound bite here and a sound bite there, and it doesn't make sense. We need the backstory to understand it. And for every book in the Bible, there is a backstory. How does it fit into the whole story? You see, the Bible is God's story, the greatest story ever told. And if you don't understand this story, you never will correctly understand your story, who you are in your story, who you are in God's story, and why you are here. This is what we're doing today. We are going to get the backstory in the book of Acts to fully understand God's story and to begin to move forward in our own story. We need the backstory story to write our own story. You're on page 11 in your workbook, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to do the back story to write our story, and we'll walk through that. Now, this is our theme verse um, this year throughout, the Focus Living chose this as our theme verse. And final words are so important. These are Jesus' final words to his disciples before he leaves them, before he ascends to heaven. And let me just read them. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Gosh, when you think about it, Jesus 
could have told them to be all sorts of things, couldn't he? He could have asked them to be anything, but he says, be my witnesses. Where? Everywhere, throughout the known world, be my witness, crossing boundaries and barriers and so forth. These are his last words to his disciples. What does it mean to be his witnesses? To be his witnesses. What does it mean? I like how Rick Warren puts it. When I hear the word witness, I think of a courtroom. Jesus didn't tell them to be an attorney arguing the case. He didn't tell them to be a judge judging other people. He wants them to be his witnesses. A witness just says, here's what I've done. Here's what I've heard. A witness tells the story of God, what God has done in your life. A witness tells the story of what God has done in your life. When you become a believer, you become God's witness. It's interesting when you get to the end of the book, it's like the story isn't finished. It's an unfinished story. And the reason it doesn't end is because God wants you to carry on the story. You are the subsequent chapters of the book of Acts. He wants you to tell others what he has done in your life, what you have seen and what you have heard. This is the primary task, the primary purpose of the people of God then and now. You see, you need the backstory to write your story. If I were to tell you my story, what would you hear? What would I tell you? Well, you would hear about a good, hard life. You would hear about God being the hero and how he has been so faithful to me, how he's kept his promises, how he has walked through the mountains and the valleys of my life and been with me. You would hear about his word and how it has sustained my heart every day in the deepest moments. You would hear about his goodness and his mercy that follows me every day. This is what you would hear in my story. What about your story? What would people hear in your story? Maybe some of you are here this morning and you have never even thought about that. This is a good place to start your story with God and I'm so glad you're here. Maybe some of you have come this morning to write a new chapter in your story. You want a new beginning or you want to go deeper into your story. Or maybe you haven't even thought your stories worth sharing. You don't really think it's worthy of a story. Or maybe you're thinking your story's finished. There's nothing more to write. See, Acts is showing us that there's so much more to our stories. God's not done yet. So wherever you are in your story, God wants you to be part of his story and be his witnesses. Now to answer some of those questions on your page, who wrote the book of Acts? Who wrote the book of Acts? Well, tradition and Bible scholars, they fully agreed that Luke wrote the book of Acts. 
Luke is the author of the Gospel of Luke, and he is the author of Acts. It's somewhat debated whether he was a converted Jew or Gentile, um, but we'll leave that still for for debate. And um, just in case you're wondering, Luke is not one of the twelve disciples. And I have to admit, I had to, I confess that I had to look that up just to make sure. He's not one of the 12 disciples, and he is Paul's greatest traveling companion and friend. He's part of the missionary team that um, travels throughout the world and is spreading the gospel of Jesus. He's a doctor, Paul calls him his beloved physician. In fact, um, Luke is with Paul at the end of his life, ministering to him as he dies. As a doctor, he is an articulate and detailed historian. He keeps accurate records and... um, He's an investigator. In fact, in the Gospel of Luke, it tells that he investigated these things very carefully. He investigated everything very carefully. He researched it. He talked to people. He interviewed. And he is a careful investigator, researcher, and eyewitness. All throughout the book, you can see the pronoun we, us. And so you see that Luke is going right along with Paul. He, uh, he is an eyewitness to many of the stories that are happening. And there are, Luke gives us some amazing main characters in the story, but the main characters are not the hero. God is the hero of the story. The power of the heroes or the story is in God. God is the hero. Where God enters the story is the amazing part of the story. Luke is spotlighting God throughout the story. He's giving God the glory in this story. I love this um, song by Matthew West. My story, your glory. My story, your glory. My pain, your purpose. My mess, your message. In all things I know you are working. One life, one mission, one reason why I'm living. All for you, not for me. My story, your glory. I love those words because whenever you are telling your story, like Luke, then it brings glory and honor to God. Like Luke, we are storytellers. We are to be his witness. We need the backstory to write our story. To whom is it written? this book. It says to Theophilus. Theophilus is a common Greek name. And um, in Luke, it says to the most excellent Theophilus. So it's possible that Theophilus is a real person. He's probably educated, holds a high office. But there are other scholars that believe um, Theophilus is not a real name. It was a common name. So perhaps um, it's not a real name. And this book is addressed to um, what the name is in Greek divided up to. Theo, theos there means, um, means God, and phileo means to love. So perhaps because it was a dangerous time to be a Christian, this letter is addressed to God lovers, 
or to friends of God. And um, I think that's wonderful, don't you? That Almighty God had Luke write a letter to perhaps strengthen one person, Theophilus, to strengthen his faith, but also to all of us who are friends of God or ones who love God. I love that perhaps it was meant for both. And that would include all of you and me. I love that about Theophilus. Thinking about that, who is your Theophilus? Who is your Theophilus to share your story? Luke wanted to share this story with Theophilus. And um, in fact, all throughout the book of, of Acts, you see all these divine encounters. You see all these interactions where um, the Holy Spirit has guided them, and then they end up sharing their story with that person, a divine encounter appointment to share their story. See, God has given you all sorts of circumstances and experiences in your life where he has entered your story and you can be his witness to share what he ha- what you have seen and what ha- he has done in your life cuz what- whatever it is small or large it's worth telling other- others and it may be exactly what someone needs to hear. We can ask, we can pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us to those Theophiluses, <laughs> to, to tell us, to, to guide us to the words that we might share with them. Because you never know, your story may connect someone to Jesus for the first time, or your story may end up encouraging or strengthening someone's faith. Last spring, we traveled to Israel. It was a really special time. And there were so many new friends we met. And as we sat there together at meals, we would often ask, What is your story of faith? What is your story of God? And I can tell you that was one of my favorite things in the trip. It encouraged and strengthened my faith because if God had worked in their life in a certain way, then I know that is true for God working in my life. When was this story written? When was it written. Every book in the Bible is written at a certain time in history. And so we can know for sure or that the story was written somewhere between 60 and 64 AD. And the reason we know this is because, remember, Lucas this has all this attention to detail. He's a historian, and he never mentions some really key historical events. He never mentions the destruction of the temple or some of the persecution the Christians had under Nero or even the death of his companion, Paul. So we know that it's written before, um, between these dates. And we know it covers from Jesus' ascension, which is 30 AD, to 64 AD. 34 years it covers. We know, what what did the world look like at that time? It was controlled and ruled by the Roman Empire, which was vast and strong and powerful. And their belief system deeply influenced society. And they allowed people to practice their religion or their faith, but they imposed the superiority of the Roman emperor and all the many gods that they had. We will see in Acts that the church's 
early um, boldness to share the message of Jesus brought conflict. It led to a lot of conflict between the government and the church. But you can know for sure that as they were arrested or giving their um, testimony in in front of government officials, that they shared their story, that they gave their story over and over. We also see in this time of history the unbelieving Jews, the Jews who didn't believe in the gospel of Jesus. And so there arises a conflict between them. And so Christians, the new Christians and unbelieving Jews disagreed. They disagreed about the work and the person of Jesus. The Jews could not think it was possible For a man crucified, they could not even imagine their Messiah could be crucified, a criminal. And so this same conflict still arises today between believers and between unbelieving Jews, the work and person of Jesus Christ. The Christians, um, as time grew, became to... they. Be understood that the gospel was for everyone. And this caused a lot of conflict. Does this sound familiar <laughs> to our world itself? This is why we need the backstory to write our story. Because this is what they are. Believers in an unbelieving world. Believers in an unbelieving world. It reminds us of the social and the political pressures that they faced are some of the same social and political pressures that we face. And we can learn and get so much wisdom from how they navigated these waters. On six different occasions, you see Paul giving his story. You see Paul giving his story in um, to the government and so forth. And so he gives his story instead of quoting scripture on six different occasions. You can see it's hard to argue with your own personal story. Stories have a way of bypassing defenses, don't they? They bypass bypass defenses and they win hearts. And we will see that. In what style is this written? Acts is the greatest story. It's a historical narrative. It's a historical narrative. That means it's story form and it's historical based in true historical facts. It's absolutely true. Luke wrote Acts so that Theophilus and us would know that these stories are true and trustworthy. The backstory is true. You need to know that to write your story. See, you're going to see yourself in these stories. You're going to connect with them like you have never connected before. These stories are of Christian people walking and modeling faith. You're going to connect with these stories. Your heart will love reading them. There isn't a dull page in the book of Acts. (laughs) It's action-packed, full of adventure. You're going to read stories of amazing, bold faith and conversions of the most unlikely characters and persecution and miracles and journeys and shipwreck and prison breaks and prayer. 
and fellowship. There are some great stories. And as you connect with these stories, then you will see yourself and be able to write another chapter in your story. What are the general themes of the book? I have talked about a lot of them already. I have talked about the worldwide spread, witness of the gospel. I have talked about there's opposition and persecution, un- believers in an unbelieving world. I've talked about that this is the earliest record of the church, the beginnings of the church. But there's one thing that I haven't talked about that is a very important part of this book, and that's the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit, how are they going to be his witnesses? How? Same for you and for me. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. This is how the Holy Spirit Let me go back. The Holy Spirit is the person who fuels your story. The Holy Spirit is the person who will fuel your story. It's the gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit who is regenerating, who is empowering, who is guiding, who is teaching, who is sanctifying. You see, this mission that Jesus gave, his last words to the disciples, be his witness, it's really like mission impossible, isn't it? (laughs) It is like impossible. This was a ragtag group of believers. They didn't have a lot going for them. They had no prestige, no power, no political pool, no money. They faced enormous obstacles. But you know what? The history books record that they did just that. They were his witnesses. They brought it all over the world. They're ordinary people just like you and me doing extraordinary things. Mission in possible. And so Acts is going to remind us that anything, anything is possible, empowered by the Holy Spirit. What is your mission impossible in your story? What is it? Is it health? Your marriage? Finances? Relationships? Long, deep pain and hurt? I like what Ralph Waldo Emerson says. What lies behind us and what lies before us are teeny matters to what lies within us. Isn't that great? In conclusion, Acts is really going to energize your faith. (laughs) You have come to the right place. You need the backstory to write your story, to begin to write your story, to add to your story. And I pray that this year is going to be a year that we strengthen and move in our story and we share our stories to connect someone to Jesus or to encourage others' faith. I want to conclude with this song, Um, and for those of you that are watching us online, we can't conclude with this song in the video, but you can go to YouTube and search for My Story, Daddy Big Weave. And then today, this morning, as we finish 
watching this video, you're going to meet in your table groups and you're going to discuss and share where do you see God in your story. As we close with this video, let me just close us in prayer. Luke, Lord, I just thank you so much for these stories of faith that speak to us in Acts. Would you just help us to be your witnesses, to tell your story? And would you continue the story of you in our lives where you have entered into our story? Amen.